Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, this is the very first class for our Amagurumi Club. Um, there we go. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, really, really excited about the 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 feedback we've had. A lot of people are interested. Um, I did have one person ask me this morning. So what what's Amagurumi for? Amagurumi is for nothing. Amagurumi is for fun. There, there is no other reason other than to make cute little fun things. You can make stuffed animals. You can make, <clears throat> there's a variety of things. You can make creatures. You can, um, our current favorite one is this book. Uh, we're going to talk about different designers along the way. And one of them is Lauren Epsi. Um, I'm sorry, Espy. And she does this one. It's all um, amigurumi food, which you know, you put a face on anything and it's adorable. So um, we've had some other examples of Amagurumi in the shop, our little frog. That's another designer we're going to do something with. And we've had, this is a, it's on, it's attached to a wobble ball. So it makes this wobble. It's like a baby toy, but it is an example of Amagurumi. Um, crocheted little creature with a face. It almost always has a face, even if it's an inanimate object. And we've also got our cute little duck here to another amigurumi. Um, so after this class, I'm just going to say this because I forgot to say it this morning. You're going to get excited and you're going to like doing it and you're going to want to make something else. Lots of patterns out there on Etsy, on Pinterest, on Ravelry. Um, if you are new to amigurumi, I suggest... Today, we're going to do something that looks like this. It's just a little ball shape. The fewer shapes and add-on things, the easier the pattern's going to be. So this would not be a good first project. And I think this was one of my first projects. You can see my eyes are not the same. <laughs> um, you have to do a lot of shaping. Um, you have to make a lot of extra pieces to attach. All of those add different steps that we're going to get to, but I wouldn't recommend for a first project. But there are, if there's just a little shaping, absolutely go for it. So play with it, check it out. There is a lot out there. Um, I'm going to guide us through the year. This first one, we're just going to make this today. Next month, we're going to take two months to make a project. So we'll talk about a designer and the pattern and we'll make some of the pieces. And probably on the second month, we'll be putting, I'll be showing you how to put different pieces together. Okay. But I'm going to give you some basic tips and tricks today on how to make these cute little amigurumi pieces. You could add ears to these. There's lots of patterns out there with ears and make it a little bunny. You can make it a cat. You can make it a hamster, whatever you want it. Um, but this is going to cover some of the basics. All right. So I'm going to go to sharing my screen because that's where all the good stuff is. All right, so these are two different versions. I just used two different colors. I used slightly different eyes. I did a little different face, but the same basic pattern. This pattern is on our website. Um, under the Amigurumi Club, there is a list of a, of a basic tool list, a basic toolkit you should have going forward when you're doing Amigurumi. And for something like this, we were trying to figure out how to put a pattern up because I created this pattern. So it is um, on our website as a picture that you should be able to double click on and either print or add it to your phone or something so you can see um, you can see this. If you aren't able to and you're local, pop in and I'll give you a copy. If you're not local, I will email you a copy. Um, so that you'll have a copy of the actual pattern, okay? Remember, this is being recorded, so you can always go back. Um, there is a lot to cover, so we're gonna move. We're gonna move along, so I can get to all the different pieces and parts, and um, some kind of crucial things going forward that we'll be using with any of our amigurumi um, creations we make. I wanted just to kind of point out in this first one, okay. Your basic toolkit. Um, for this one in particular, I'm using two colors of a yarn. You can use any yarn you want, especially for something like this. 
I happen to be using a worsted weight cotton. You can use scraps, you can use wool, you can use acrylic. I wouldn't recommend something super, super thick and chunky. It's just a little harder to work with. But we had some people this morning using um, our Sheep Just Katona, which is a fingering weight, mercerized cotton. Um, you can use anything you want. The key, and I think I said this on the website, is on when you're doing amigurumi, I'm going to pull this one up and zoom in just a little. When you're looking, it, hopefully you have the yarn label. If you don't, don't worry about it. You can try different hooks. So this uh, particular yarn that I'm using um, is asking for, it's, it's saying that you should use between a 5.5 and a 6.5 millimeter hook, okay? That was their recommended um, size for making crocheted items. When you're doing amigurumi, you need to go smaller than that. The reason being, is you want these stitches to be very tight so that when you stuff it, the stuffing doesn't come out through the holes. So for example, on this one, since I've learned a lot, I probably could have gone down another hook size on this one because I can see the stuffing through the holes. But at this point, I was ready to be done. <laughs> so I left it alone. All right, but that's the kind of thing you're gonna get if you're not using the correct hook size, all right? So for my particular project, I this coastal cotton comes in um, a variety of colors, a lot of colors, and it's actually, we just got new colors coming in. It's also coming out in a um, variegated colorway, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I played around with my hook size and I end up using, it was recommended a 5.5 to a 6.5. I'm using a 3.5. I went down two full millimeter sizes to get a nice tight fitting and not impossible to work with fabric, all right? Any pattern that you see, even if it's recommending worsted weight, you can use any yarn you want, any weight you want. It will just adjust the size that it makes. So don't let that throw you, especially if you're playing and practicing, use your scraps, whatever you've got, okay? but just know that you need to go down to a smaller hook size um, to get that nice tight fabric because you do want it to kind of hold its shape like this, but not so tight that you cannot make your stitches. So it's, it, it's kind of a, you gotta, you gotta play with it a little to figure out what you need, okay? So <clears throat> the nice thing is this comes in so many colors. I think I'm gonna be making most of our things out of this yarn and I know that I can always use this hook. I can put all of this in a bag together and it's all together. All right, so you're gonna to need to have some good sharp scissors handy. You're going to need stitch markers, at least one stitch marker. For this pattern, you only need one. Um, something that is removable, something that you can slip onto a stitch like this, because we're gonna be marking the first stitch of every round. So it can be something like this one, or it could be one of these safety pin styles as long as you can get it on and off, okay? So you need to have one of those around. You will also need to have a darning needle to weave in ends at the end. And then for stuffing, I have, um, you can get stuffing at, um, at Michael's, at Joanne, you could maybe even get it at the dollar store. I know I haven't checked there recently. Any sort of um, light, fluffy stuffing, you will need more than you think. Like if you're looking at this little guy and this big wad of stuffing, this condenses down when you stuff it in there to a very small amount. I will probably end up using to make this guy this much stuffing, okay? It takes more than you think and you're gonna be using a little bit at a time. Another handy tool, some bags of stuffing when you buy them will come with um, what looks like a wooden dowel in them that's on purpose. That's to help you push the stuffing into small places. Like for example, when we make this arm, we make this long tube and then you gotta push the stuffing down in there. Having one of these, I have lost my dowel. I use wooden chopsticks because I've got a bazillion of those laying around the house. Um, I have also found 
that pushing it in with the smooth end is fine. Pushing it in with a broken end is even better because it catches the little fibers and really pushes it into the small places, okay? And all of these are listed on the basic toolkit on the website, so you don't have to write everything down. And then for embellishments, um, in other words, making the face, I'm using safety eyes, which we sell in the shop. We sell a variety of sizes. It's a little black eye that looks like it's got a screw on the back. And these are made for, they lock into place. So if you're making a toy for somebody little, they don't come undone. Um, and they come with a back like this that locks on. And you, once you push it past those screws, it will it will lock into place and will not come undone. <clears throat> you do not have to use safety eyes. You could sew on buttons. You could use embroidery floss, which is another um, thing I think you should have around to make eyes. And that's what I've used to make the nose and the mouth. <clears throat> you can use a darning needle to do that. But I have found that these, and I haven't found a source where I can get them yet. These doll needles <clears throat> are really long, pointy, sharp needles. But what's nice about them, and they're called doll needles. I've seen them both at Michael's and I've seen them at Joanne. But none of our vendors seem to carry them. But you could use just a long, a regular needle as well, depending on the size of your creature. Let me just pull one out. What's nice about these, and I'm not going to use the giant one, even this one is fine. When you are have this threaded with embroidery floss and you need to, you can tie a knot in it, you can push it from the back and come up this way. So you don't have to catch everything in the front. You can come from the back and then pull the, the knot will catch on the inside and disappears. So having some of these is really handy to have. These are called doll needles and they're for doll making, for making faces and to go through thick pieces of stuffing. So they're really nice and sharp, okay? So that's another suggestion. All right, you, uh, if you don't have embroidery floss, um, you could also just use thread, but embroidery floss is really pretty handy. Or um, if you've ever made friendship bracelets, whatever you use for that will work as well, okay? So this one's kind of a, a, when we go forward and we're making something else, we'll have a very specific supply list. Um, this is just kind of general to have. I think you can probably make most anything. You might have to adjust your colors or whatnot, but to make any sort of amigurumi that you're finding. All right, let's get started. Get my hook. <clears throat> All right, so. Amigurumi starts, I'm gonna use this little guy as an example. Zoom out just a little. There we go. Starts right here. We're knit, we're crocheting in a spiral. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're gonna be starting with a ring and we're gonna be making rounds, but we're not gonna be making rounds that end. We're gonna just gonna, in other words, if you were making rows. You would crochet to the end of your row. You would chain one, you would turn and you would work across that row. You would chain one and turn. We're gonna be doing these in rounds that don't end. So when we get to, we make our circle and we go into the next stitch, there's no chaining first. We're just gonna go into the next stitch, which gives you, I'm trying to get this angled right where you can see the spiral that it makes. Okay, but we still need to know where our our rounds begin and end. So we because it as it increases, we have to add stitches, and that's where our stitch marker is going to come in. There's lots of ways to start. I like to start my amigurumi, and I and as soon as this is over, I I didn't have a chance today. I'm going to record a video on just making the magic ring, so you don't have to watch this whole video to do it. This is my favorite way to make a nut to start with a circle. If this is, I'm gonna show you an alternate way that is probably easier, um, but this is how I like to start with a magic ring. I'm gonna take my palm up, I'm gonna lay it to my yarn, my tail across my three fingers. I'm gonna take the working yarn. I'm gonna crisscross it, make an X like that. 
I bring the yarn around and when I turn my hand over, I have two parallel lines. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Take the tail, lay it across your three fingers. Bring this up, wrap it, make an X on that side of your hand. And when you turn it over, you've got two parallel lines. And I tuck my ends right there so I can hold them, okay? You're gonna take your crochet hook. So this one right here is gonna be my first strand. This one right here is my second strand. I'm gonna go under the first strand. I'm gonna grab the second strand with the hook and I'm going to twist it up and catch it on my hook, okay? Then I'm gonna go over that first strand again. I'm gonna catch the second strand again and I'm gonna pull it through. And I'll do it one more time, but like I said, I'm gonna do a whole video on that. And then if I slowly lay my fingers out, what I have here is a ring that if I should pull the tail, it will tighten up so that I have an invisible, no hole in the center, okay? And I can make my stitches into this ring, all right? So that's why I'm gonna leave that because I'm gonna come back to it and get a different color real quick. Another way to do it, and that's, that it, it, that's, a, that's a hard thing to, to get the handle of is the magic ring. Another way you can do it to get started is to make a slip knot. Put your slip knot on your hook, chain four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Then go to the very first chain you made, insert your hook and make a slip stitch, which just means you, grab, you do a yarn over, you pull it through the stitch, anything and through the loop on your hook so no yarn over in the middle and what that creates we've just connected our first stitch with our last stitch and made a tiny little ring i'm going to bring this up in the center that we can make our stitches into okay so that's another way you can do it chain four pull it out and show you again make a chain four Go into the first stitch that you made, the first chain, grab the yarn, pull it through and through, slip stitch. And then you almost have to open it up a little bit to find where the center is because we coiled those stitches around. That's another way to go. All right, the first round of our pattern we're gonna get going is to make six single crochets into and the pattern says magic ring. I'm gonna do one here and then I'm gonna do the magic ring. So I'm gonna poke it right into the center of that ring. Everything in this pattern is single crochets. I'm gonna go back into the same space. Let me zoom in just a bit. Okay, that's two. I've made two stitches. I've already broken my first rule. Here's my second stitch. Here's my first stitch. I'm gonna mark with a stitch marker underneath the legs on my very first single crochet I made. Make that a habit that you mark the very first stitch you made. So that's two single crochets. It also helps you count your stitches. And three. It's gonna start to get full in there. Four. Five. And six, I'm just gonna go over my tail a little bit. All right, and I'm just gonna do a quick double check that I actually did six. Here's how I count my rows or my rounds. Here's the loop. I pulled it up big so it's not gonna get lost. The stitch right beneath there is, is the last stitch I made. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and this marks my first stitch, which is number six, okay? So the one thing about making a ring like this is you really cannot get rid of that hole in the center. It's not a big deal. Once you put some, if I put some stuffing behind it, you're never gonna see it. It's gonna kind of disappear. But if you do it, 
I'm going to do one on the magic ring that I started. And here's how you make stitches into the magic ring. Here's the ring I'm making my stitches into. I hold it open and I'm going to make six single crochets. One, oh, mark my stitch. And when I mark my stitch, I always go underneath both legs because I know that's where I'm going to be making the first stitch of my next round. So I just have to replace that with my hook the next time. So that's one, two, three. It's a little wonky here. And you have to hold your ring open. Four. Five. And it looks like I'm just making them all in a line. And that's on purpose. And six. I'm going to do a quick double count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, with the magic ring, I can take, pull that up big so I don't lose my loop. I can take my tail, and if I've done it correctly, it will pull and tighten it and make it, you have no hole in the center, okay? And that's why we like the magic ring. And you can leave it as it is now. It'll be a little loose. You can always go back and tighten it more later, okay? And I'm just bringing it together. And here I am back around. Here was the first stitch I made marked, and that's where round two starts. We're gonna do an increase in every stitch. We're gonna go from six stitches to 12 in this next round. So I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. And on this round, I'm gonna show you a trick. I didn't get a chance to show it this morning. Um, another way that you can make tight, even stitches, if you find that as you're doing this, um, even on the small crochet hook and you don't wanna go any smaller, you're still getting a little bit of holes. There's something called the golden loop. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do my increase, which is going under this, the legs of the stitch, yarning over and coming back. If you are a person who pulls up and lifts like that, and then you yarn over and finish, you have a much looser stitch, okay? What determines the height of your stitch, I'm gonna take it back out, is if you go in, grab that working yarn, and you keep it very close to the, to the uh, work you're working on and don't pull it up, don't be a lifter, slide it back down. Doesn't have to be tight, just closer to your work. Yarn over and pull through. You will get a much shorter stitch and less chance of holes. I'm gonna go into the same stitch again because it's two in each stitch to increase. So I've made two stitches and I've already broken my rule by not marking my first stitch. One, two. Here's the first stitch I made. I put two stitches in the same stitch. I'm gonna repeat that again. One, in the same stitch again, two. And I'm not bringing my yarn, my hook up very high. I used to be a lifter. I couldn't figure out when we did the mandalas, I couldn't get my mandalas to fit into the ring. And I was using the right and my, my gauge was right, but my stitches were just a hair too tall because I was lifting here. So I've done one, two, three, four. And then I get to 12, five. Keeping it close to the work right there, six. <clears throat> seven. And I'm keeping a pretty good tension on my yarn here because I want it to be a firm fabric. I'm not letting it be loose. Two in the next stitch. And like anything, the first round is always a little fiddly because there's not much to hold on to. It does get easier the more rounds we get. One, two, the two stitches in each stitch all the way around. How we increase. 
Pull up a big loop so nothing falls off. I like to count backwards. I start with the last stitch I made and I count back to my stitch marker. For me, that just works. You could certainly count from your stitch marker and go around this way. So for me, this works. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If you have anything, if, at this point, if you were to have anything other than 12, here's what I would say. If you can't, and it's really hard to see where you might have missed one, I suggest pulling it back to the stitch marker and just doing that row again. It's only 12 stitches, it's not a big deal. You can see my holes starting to open up a little. If I take my tail <clears throat> and give it a tug, it closes it right back up, okay? So don't worry about that. All right, so now I've got 12 stitches. Take out my stitch marker because I know where I'm gonna make my next stitch. Round three is we're gonna do a single crochet and then an increase. So make my single crochet. Mark my stitch. And then do an increase in the next stitch. Two in the same space. And then because it's in parentheses, we're gonna repeat that all the way around. So just a single in the next space and then an increase. Single. And if you've got questions, don't hesitate to ask. Single. Okay. End of this round, we should have 18 stitches. Single. And it's already starting to, you can see your stitches a little bit better. And I know I'm <clears throat> probably gonna end up okay because I have one stitch left and I have to make an increase into that stitch. I just did a single, so I should work out okay here, but I'm still gonna double check and do a quick count. Because this is just kind of a basic shape, if you were to be off a stitch, it's really not the end of the world. Don't, don't let that trouble you. As we do more and more of these, it'll be a little easier to see your stitches. Pull up my loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I've given you on the pattern what your stitch count should be. We just did round three at the end. All right, so at the end of that round, you should have 18 stitches. So our next round, we're gonna start with a single and then an increase. And then our parentheses are telling us what we have to repeat. Then you do two single crochets, so single, single, and then an increase. Two single crochets and then an increase. You do that a total of five times. You should have one stitch left to make a single crochet, which gets us the 24 stitches. Okay, I'm gonna do that real quick. Again, this pattern is on the website, but if you need me to send it to you, email or whatever, or you wanna pick one up, I'm happy to do that. We couldn't figure out a way to get the PDF on the website. It wasn't working. All right, I'm gonna make my first stitch a single. I'm gonna mark it and I just get myself into that habit because as you're going around, you could just keep going and going and going and never know when to end. You gotta know when to end. Single and then an increase, the two in the next. And then my repeat is two singles, keeping that golden loop low, one, two, 
and then an increase. Another in the same spot. Two. And an increase. All right. I'm looking at our time. I want to make sure we get to the other parts. Again, this is being recorded. You can always go back. And I'll get this up tonight. Two singles and then an increase. I don't recommend doing increase or decrease rounds while you're watching TV because it's easy. Did I just do two singles? Did I do an increase? I can't remember. And it can be hard to see because the stitches are so tight. Um, sometimes you have to pull them out one at a time to find where you did an increase, which is okay. I've done that too. Yeah, so that was an increase. So two singles. Two. And an increase. Increase. Yeah, I didn't do it right on this one. I can already tell. One, two, three, four. I think I didn't put two singles in between my increase. So in a perfect world, I would pull this out till you get to the right spot. I want to move on, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to make sure at the end of this round, I've got 24 stitches. And I do. On some pieces, and the reason why that's important, let me find one. Your increases and your decreases will line up with each other. And if you if you don't get them all made in the same spot, you waddled off. Um they won't you'll get kind of a you won't get that nice spiral design, which is a which is okay. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so that's the end of round four. Round five, and I want to make sure I get to the decreasing and stuff too. Round five, you're going to do three singles, so one, two, three, and an increase. And you're going to repeat that all the way across till you have 30 stitches. Rounds six and seven are just single crochets, no increasing on that at all. Still have 30 stitches. Round eight is another increase row two single crochets and an increase, and then four singles and an increase, four singles and an increase, four singles and an increase. Around you go. And then rounds nine, 10, and 11 are all single crochets. But, and I wrote this at the bottom of the pattern. Oh, I didn't write it at the pattern. Excellent. We are gonna change colors. I wanna teach you how to change colors. We're gonna change colors on round 10. I'm gonna change the pattern. Um, and I'll put up a new one, but you can write on yours. Round 10, change colors. So you will do round nine in single crochet, and then we're gonna change colors. So that's what I wanna show you. And then that will be our halfway point. Um, and we're gonna start decreasing. And I want to show you this really cool decrease. So I have one that's already to that point. Okay, this is the end of round nine. I've done a whole round of single crochets all the way around, and I'm ready to start with my new color. Okay. So here's how you do it. I, I went ahead and I finished the round, but you actually want to finish the last stitch of round nine. I'm gonna pull it out, just the last stitch. 
Okay, so there's one more stitch to single crochet. You're gonna do, this is how you change colors. I'm gonna insert the hook. I'm gonna grab the yarn and I'm gonna come back. So I've got two loops on my hook with my old color. I'm gonna take my new color, just make a little loop. There's my tail hanging, put it over my hook. That's like my yarn over and I'm gonna pull it through, okay? So now I'm down to one loop, one loop on my hook and it's my new color. Real quick, I'm gonna take my, the end of, I cut my yarn, my old yarn and my new yarn. I'm gonna take the ends and because it's amigurumi and these are gonna get tucked into the back and you don't have to weave away these ends, I'm gonna tie them in a little knot. I don't usually recommend a knot, but you're never gonna see it. It's gonna be on the inside and that's gonna hold my stitches still, okay? So I have completed the last stitch of row nine with my new color, okay? This one, you can see where I went from the blue to the yellow and it makes kind of a jog. That's called a, a, a jogged stripe where it makes a little, makes a little stair steppy. There we go, we can see it better now, okay? I'm gonna show you a way to reduce that. And here's how you do it. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. My next round is also, round 10 is all single crochet. I'm gonna just use my, my new color. Instead of making a single crochet into the first stitch, I'm gonna make a slip stitch. I'm gonna go into the first stitch, grab my yarn, and I'm gonna pull it through both loops, okay? And I'm gonna mark it because that's still my first stitch. But it doesn't have any height because it's a slip stitch. And that will make, when we come back around, you will see that, that will make that jogless, and make the join a little less um, dramatic. There's a way that you can make it nearly invisible and we're gonna do that on one of our further creations, but it, it's a lot more involved. And then I'm just gonna single crochet with my new color. I'm done with my old color. If you were making stripes, I could have left my old color attached, not cut it, because then you, you know, come back to the round and you could change back to your old color and make it stripey. It also makes, when you're going from old color to new color, you get um, kind of a little zigzag where they join. Totally fine, a lot of patterns are just like that. There is a way to make that an even straight line and we're gonna do that. That's one of the skills we're gonna do in one of our future adventures. Um, I was surprised how much there was to learn with Amigurumi as I explored this. There are a lot of different things you can learn that you can apply to all kinds of things. But we're starting basic today. So I'm just gonna go all the way around, single crochet again, this is round 10. I'm gonna keep my golden loop low, close to my work, trying not to lift it. One things I love about crochet is if you make a mistake, you can just pull that stitch out. I still have 30 stitches when I'm done and you should count. Because the next uh, round 11 is also a single crochet, no increase or decrease. Um, but the next one does have decreases and you do want the decreases to line up. All right. So when you come back around and I've got another round of single crochet to do, when I get to that first stitch, which was a slip stitch, I'm just gonna treat it like a regular stitch, take out my stitch marker. It's just much shorter than the other stitches. You, can, you should still be able to get your hook underneath. There's my first stitch, go ahead and mark it. And let me get a little bit further away from it and you can see um, how it makes a little cleaner look. Okay. 
So you get a little bit less of a, a total stair step. It just, it kind of smoothly guides it in. Whereas this one is really choppy, which is okay too. Totally fine. Um, contrast. All right. And then there's another way that we'll learn in another creature where you can make this almost exactly seamless. You never see, but it's a lot more involved, more than we were willing to take on for a basic one or that I was willing to take on for a basic. So there'll always be something to learn. All right. So I'm going to actually take this back. So I want to get to the decrease round. So I'm going to pretend I've done row 11. And row 12 is our first decrease, because I want to show you this really great. It's called an invisible decrease. All right. Row 12 starts with two single crochets. So one, two, I've marked my first stitch. Again, I'm pretending this is round 12. Invisible decrease. I'm going to zoom in. A normal decrease, you would go into the next stitch, grab your yarn and come back. Go into the next stitch, grab your yarn and come back, yarn over, pull through all those stitches, okay? Which you can definitely see that I've done something there. With an invisible decrease, let me take that out. I'm going to go into the next stitch, but instead of going underneath both loops, I'm just gonna go underneath and catch just the front loop. And then I'm gonna go into the next, I'm not gonna yarn over. I'm gonna go into the very next stitch and catch its front loop. So I have the front loops of the next two stitches on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull through both of them like they were one stitch. And now I have two loops on my hook, finish the single crochet and you get a really, really nice, it's called an invisible decrease. It looks just like one stitch takes the bulk out of the stitch by just going through those front loops and not adding any yarn overs. So I'm gonna do it again. Now our repeat is four single crochets. So I'm looking, I'm already attached to this stitch. So my next stitch is right here. Four singles. One. And these are just regular under both loops. Two. Three, four, and I'm going to do another invisible decrease. So underneath the front loop of the next stitch, and then swing your hook around and go underneath the front loop of the following stitch. So now I've taken those two stitches, yarn over, pull it through both of those front loops. Yarn over, pull through both loops another invisible decrease. And then four singles again. Four. Front loop. Front loop. Pull through both those front loops. Yarn over, pull through both. And then four. Four. Front loop. Front loop. And just through there. And over the so it really does give you, you can hardly tell where I did the decreasing. There's no extra bulk. It's, really, it's, it's a really nice stitch, which I had not done before, before I started doing this. Four. And this is the fun part, because now it's getting smaller and smaller. Two. 
So there is the end of round 12, okay? Um, round 13 and 14 has you just doing single crochet all the way around, no decreasing whatsoever. And then round 15, take my, I'm gonna go ahead and do one round is just single. Mark your stitch. I'm telling you, if you get in the habit of marking your first stitch on every crochet project you do, you will always know where to begin and end. It makes it much easier. It's just a good habit to get into. I wish I had learned that sooner. It would have saved me a lot of wonky looking sides. Um, while I'm doing this round of single crochet, I'm going to talk about the, the stuffing in the eyes for a second. And I was very ambitious in what I wanted to show in this class. I just don't want us to run too far over time. So you can, you want to make sure if you're using safety eyes, you need to make sure you add them before you stuff and close up your figure. Because you, it's like putting on an earring. You have to be able to get to the back, all right? If you are adding buttons as eyes or embroidering eyes on, you can do those after you've stuffed. You don't have to do it at this point. So I'm going to show you how to do these safety eyes. Um, when you're using safety eyes, once you lock them into place, the only way to get them unlocked is to cut them off, um, which isn't easy. So make sure your eyes are where you like them. I'm going to show you where I put my eyes, but you can put them anywhere you want. They're totally about your expression. You can use really oversized eyes. You could use super tiny eyes. We carry um, a variety of sizes of safety eyes and they are on our website. I have to say though, because I knew I was gonna be doing a lot of like, I didn't wanna run out our stock. I ordered from Amazon. I guess I got around with my because I'm going to do eyes next. I ordered this from Amazon. It is a little set. It's like 12 bucks, I think. Because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. It is a variety of safety eyes. So there are big ones, just super tiny, like that. All right. And I, since I was going to be making a lot of these, this made sense to me to have. And they're just little black ones. They come in different colors. They come in different shapes. You can also get safety noses in animal shapes. It's, it, there's a lot, there's a lot you can do. Um, where you put the eyes, it's totally up to you. But what's fun is that you can play with it a little before you lock them into place. Where I put them for this one was between, and I think I did write this on the pattern between the 11th and the 12th row. So um, the uh, 10th row was the first round of the dark orange, the next row. And I like to put them, I'm gonna put them opposite. If this is where my color changes the back, I'm gonna put them just kind of opposite of there. You can put them wherever you want. You could put them up higher, you could put them lower, put them far apart. You just wanna push them in between the stitches. But what's nice is that you can play with it. Like I could put these really far apart and I could do a really funny embroidered mouth, a mouth on them. But you do want to try to get them in the same line. Unless you're going for like a crazy look, you could put one up high and one down low and do little eyebrows on them. That would be cute too. You totally personalize it and make them however you want. It's all about you, however you want to make them have their expressions. Okay but I like it right there. This is what I wanted to do. And then you take the little back, if I'm sure that's where I want them, and put the cap on and you'll hear it click, maybe. It definitely clicks. So no matter how thick this is, there's three clicks it'll click. This is not coming off, okay? I can't pull it out this way. The only way to get it off would be to like, wedge some scissors in there and cut it off because it will not pull back in this direction. Oh, oh I say I pulled the whole eye out, pulled it right through. So that's how you can get it out, pulled the whole eye through. But it's not gonna come out, the reason that they're called safety eyes, it's not gonna pull out this way where a baby could get it and swallow it. 
Let's stick that one back in. There we go. This one. And this comes with a whole bag of the backer things, which I'll probably now find under my, my couch with all my stitch markers. So I've got my little eyes. And then I can decide what kind of smile or nose. There's a lot of, you can look at uh, different pictures on, uh, on Ravelry or on Pinterest for different expressions that you can make. Um, so now as you get, as you decrease and decrease, it's going to start getting tighter and tighter. You could start stuffing with that. I am going to do a little stuffing. A little at a time. Just use your fingers and just press it out. It will compress over time. So you want to, you really want to overstuff it. On some of the creatures we do um, on arms so that they will hang down. Parts of the arm we will not overstuff so it'll it'll hang down and not stick out straight. Um, but for this shape, we really want to overstuff it. So I'm going to put a whole lot in there. And I'm just kind of putting it in and spreading it around. I don't need to use my dowel yet because my fingers still fit. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and go to my next decrease round. I'm skipping one of the, the single crochet, one of the single crochet rows, but that's okay. I'm going to make my first single. Make my stitch. Underneath the front loop. I'm going to use the front loop, through those loops, and pull through. And singles and invisible decrease. Now, you don't have to change colors, obviously. I just wanted to show you that color changing technique because that's, and some of the other things that we do, we are going to be changing colors. So having that skill is good. Oh, I stopped counting. So here's how you, this is what happens when you stop counting. I'm going to go back and figure out where I'm at. Here was my first stitch. One, two, three singles. Here was my decrease. I put two stitches together as one. And then one, two, three. And I should have decreased right there. So I'm going to pull it back. Again, I think it distracted. <laughs> One, two, three, three, And the stuffing is going to kind of want to pop out a little, but we're starting to really bring it in. So it's going to end up staying. You can wait a little longer to do your um, stuffing if you wanted to. And if you've noticed, my bottom has stayed nice and tight. It hasn't come loose again. I didn't weave that away or anything. I just left it in there. It's not going anywhere. I didn't weave these away. And we played a lot with these today. They've been just fine. Okay. So even if you're doing the circle or the magic loop, you don't have to worry about weaving those ends away. They just hang out in there. When I did my color change, I tied my two ends together. They're just in there. The only weaving away you have to do in this particular pattern is you have to weave away your end when you're done. But I've already lost track again. There's my, I'm going to pull it back until, here's another way to tell. I'm going to pull it back until I see my decrease. 
It's just a single. It's just a single. It's a single. That's a single. Where's my decrease? Oh, right there. That was my decrease right there. Okay. When I pulled out two loops, I knew that um, that was my decrease. Okay. Does anybody have any questions as I go around this little guy? Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So I was wondering if what needle to use, because I my the yarn I'm using is um it says to use a three point a four millimeter hook, but I don't know what size so you do you do you find that do you tend to crochet tight? Do you know? Um, I'm sort of or in, the you, or in the middle, or do you find that you're on the looser side or are you just kind of in the middle? I'm in the middle. So I, I would say you could probably like, I feel like a, what yarn are you using? Um, it's soft fun. The soft fun. I feel like you could like a two millimeter might be a little too small. You could try a 2.5 millimeter hook and see okay. if, if that works for you. But again, I think you sometimes you just have to play with it a little bit um, to see what you like. Like in class this morning, um, Ingrid, would you say that you were on the looser side with yours? I would say yes. Yeah. I'm a little looser. I'm learning how to tighten up just a little bit. Right. But... And, and you could try a, a, a smaller hook as well. Um, but some people, but going in the round, like when I'm doing rows, my tension is very different than when I'm going in the round. Same when I'm knitting. So I would try, um, Lena, I would try maybe like a two and a half millimeter hook and see, and if it's really hard to get your hook in there to do the stitches, go up a little size until you're comfortable. And if you want to come in and, and get a couple hooks to play with, and then you can pick which one. Okay. Uh works for you. I need yeah. to see if we have any small yeah. hooks. Right. That was a deep place. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. That was a good question. Okay. So now I'm getting down here to the end. Single. I'm going to um let's see single decrease. All of a sudden you're the decreasing goes really quick and all of a sudden you're down to not many stitches left. And then we're gonna do two singles. Decrease. Nope. And also I think will depend, Lena, another um, is the type of yarn you use. So the soft bun has a little squish to it where the yarn I'm using really doesn't. It's, um, it's, I don't wanna, it's not exactly stiff, but it is stiffer than soft bun. So you might find that you don't have to go down too tight because the yarn will kind of squish together on its own. Um, so if you don't have quite the, uh, you know, one and a half or two millimeters smaller, don't worry. You can try okay, you can try another one. Um, yeah, so play with it a little bit. So this pattern you could do in a variety of sizes of yarn. Um, and we're always happy to loan you a hook to try until you get the one that you need.
Okay. All right, so we're getting just smaller and smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more stuff in because I wanna try to get it into the sides there. I really wanna fill them out. If you wait till the very, and then I lost my eye, that loose eye popped out. Maybe he'll be a pirate. <laughs> we'll put a patch on his eye. <laughs> Stuff him in there. All right, so this is where I'm gonna start to use my dowel because I wanna make sure I'm filling out the sides. If you use the smooth end, this is and this is one of my chopsticks, you can get it in there. But what I have found with a broken end is that it really grabs the fibers and doesn't push through the fibers. And I can really, really smush it in there. Just don't give yourself splinters. All right, I'm gonna do another round and then I'm gonna stuff them up here. So eventually you're gonna get down to those original six stitches. You're gonna start decreasing, like we increased on every stitch on our first round, we're gonna decrease on our stitch on our last round. I just wanted to be able to show you how to finish them off a little bit. I'm moving this guy a little further in here. So you're going to get down to where you've got, um, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven. that's close enough. You're going to get down to, Um, a very small amount of stitches. And this is when you really want to finish stuffing them. You want to get into this edging right here along the top. Because this stuffing will deflate. I'm pushing a lot of air in there with it. So it will lose some of its, you think you got enough in there, add a little bit more. It will really help keep its shape. All right, so I can't really get my finger in there anymore, so I'm going to use my towel. And that really pushes it in. Okay. And now he's nice and that's good. All right, so for this last round, I'm going to go around and I'm going to do a decrease. I'm not even going to put my stitch marker in. I'm going to do a decrease every round so deep every stitch so decrease the two stitches and it's going to get really tight really fast decrease. and you can see or i'm starting to see holes it's because i skipped some of those single crochet rounds and that's what's giving me these holes here. It didn't have enough, it went decreased too quickly. 
but that's okay. I wanted to get you to this part. Mm -hmm. So eventually you're going to get to something that looks like this. You're going to have this tiny little hole in the top. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to use my darning needle. And I'm going to catch that last loop. and really pull it because that's what is going to keep it from unraveling and then as long as you don't have too much of a hole and i really don't with this one it almost looks like it's just got a little tippy top i'm going to just go underneath one of these stitches i'm going to push it all the way through through the stuffing and i've got a lot of stuffing in there get it to come out the other side Mm -hmm. There it goes. All right. Pull it gently at this point because what you don't want to do is pull it so hard that it inverts it. So just pull it. Play with your shape a little. I just want it to be mostly flat on top. All right, and I'm happy with the way that looks. It's not gonna come undone because I did a little knot. I really had to work through a lot of stuffing. To finish it off, very gently just pull out just a tiny little bit, just a tiny bit, snip it, and when you let it go, it disappears right back inside. No ends to weave in. And there's your little creature. I'm gonna real quick just show you a little bit on the face. Let me use one of these super sharp needles. Now this troubles me because I know I took one out, but I don't know where it's. <laughs> a very sharp needle laying around. All right, embroidery floss. Comes in strands that have been applied together. You can separate the strands if you want to. I'm gonna use this this particular one, I'm gonna use it whole because I want a little bit of a thick, but you can separate that um, into maybe two strands or three strands if you want to, if you wanna have a thinner line. I'm gonna leave it, I wanna have a thicker one, so I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna cut it until I get it threaded. Another little tool that would be very handy to have, do have them here, is a needle threader. There's also just a cool. If you have old eyes like me, it is hard to get that stuff through the eye of the needle. So uh, a needle threader also you can get at Michael's or Joanne. You have very young eyes. And you can see where they stick that little hole. You're better than I am there. All right. Here's how this works. I know I lost that in my needle. Oh, here it is. All right, so I'm going to put this through here. And then I can pull it back through. And I don't need a whole lot here. I'm going to. I'm just gonna do a little nose and mouth there. So I probably have maybe 12 inches on here. Okay. So what we can do is you can either come from the back 
and poke all the way through if you've got one of these long needles. If you do not, if you just have a, you could use your darning needle for this too. It will absolutely 100% work. It will be a little harder to come between the stitches. Let me zoom in just a little. If you want to really be precise about where you're putting your face, and I would say don't skimp on this part because having the expressions is really part of it. it it's a little harder with a darning needle. A sharper needle is a little bit easier. So I'm gonna do a face like I did with this one with this, just a little, um, like a cat nose and then have it come down. I'm gonna do a little knot in the end. And you can put it wherever you want, but I'm gonna split my stitch. And I wanna, I'm gonna put it right between my eyes. So really, really think about it before you do it. You can always cut it out um, and do it again. It's not a big deal, but I wanna put it right there. So I've got this little tail sticking out. I'm gonna either use my dowel or my, I wanna push that knot inside this little face and then I can trim it. Use your hook to really push it in. Can't get it all in, you can always trim it on. I'm just going to try to move it straight across and go over those ends. Having um small like embroidery scissors is helpful for this kind of thing. All right. I'm gonna go to the center. And this I just spent a lot of time kind of playing with. I also found on Pinterest some um, different embroidery tutorials too on just different ways you could make faces. There's endless possibilities. I just want to bring it straight down. And then to finish, straight. I'm going to push it all the way to the other side. I could pull it a little tight tie it in a little knot and let it pop back in. But I found that it really just kind of sticks to the stuffing. It's not gonna go anywhere. And you've got a little, another little guy. They all look different. So you can see what happens if you skip some of those single crochet rows. <laughs> He's definitely much shorter that way. So, so that's basic. I'm a gurumi. Do you have any more questions? No? Okay. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second.
So in the next week or so, do either of you need me? You have the pattern, Ingrid. Lena, do you need me to send you a copy of the pattern? No, I found it on my iPad. You did? Perfect. Okay. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I will put up um, what the next pattern is going to be. So you'll have it ahead of time and like what colors you might need or, or you know, that kind of stuff will all be up in the, probably in the next week. So you'll know ahead of time what you're going to need um, and what we're going to make. So I've been working on that. I'm trying to decide which the next one is the next hardest to do without it being too hard. Um, but we're going to have pieces and we're going to take two months to do that. So the first class will end up making the pieces and I'll show you some techniques for doing the, the body and the arms and legs. And then the second class, we'll, we'll look at how to attach everything and how to embellish them. So that's our plan. All right. All good. All right. Well, thanks for coming, guys. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.